So Red Wires Mix IR2. So Mix IR2 is a great little plugin made by the people over at redwires.com. Now you may know Red Wires from their impulse responses. Well Mix IR2 is probably the greatest impulse response host, especially for guitar, bass cabinets, those sort of impulse responses. So first we'll look at how to set up Mix IR2 in our DAW and use it with guitar amp, simulator, software, or hardware. So if you're going to use a software based amp simulator such as 11 RTAS or Amplitube, Guitar Rig, TH2, Pod Farm, etc, etc. You need to make sure that you have your plugins staged correctly so the signals flowing from the amp simulator into Mix IR2 for the cabinet simulation. So if you look here, right now I have Mix IR2 above 11. This is not how you would want to set up your track. If you were to set up your track such as this, with Mix IR2 before your amp simulator software, what will be happening is your input, which will be your guitar, will be coming into your DAW, first running through Mix IR2, which will be your cabinet, and then running into your amplifier. This is not what you want, at least 99.9% .9 of the time. Unless you're trying to do some sort of crazy weird effect, this is not how you want it. You'll want to have your guitar amp simulator software positioned above Mix IR2 so that the signal flow is now coming from the amp software into the cabinet software. The other thing you'll want to do is turn off the cabinet of your amp simulator software. Since you'll be using an impulse response for your cabinet, you need to turn off the cabinet in your amp simulator software. So we turn that off. We come into Mix IR2 and choose an impulse response. Choose a mic, drag and drop, and there we go. Then we're ready to start playing, recording, hashing out ideas, whatever. Because your input signal is guitar in, which is just a dry guitar, running into your guitar amp simulator software. The cabinet on that software is bypassed. And then that runs into Mix IR2, and that signal will be affected by our impulse response that we have chosen. So that should be pretty self-explanatory, really. But I thought I'd mention it right up top, so we're all on the same page. So I'll be using the 11 rack for the guitar sounds in this video. Now the 11 rec is hardware, so if you're using a hardware based guitar amp simulator, you can place Mix IR2 pretty much anywhere in the channel, provided the signal coming in is the affected amplifier sound. So we'll open up Mix IR2 here. Right now I have it bypassed and I don't have any impulse responses loaded. So since my input is from the 11 rack, I have my track armed, and if I just play, Okay, what we're hearing is just the 11 rack. Now if I were to load an impulse response into Mix IR2, and then we'll turn it on, and now I were to play, okay, that doesn't sound good. That's because our cabinet is activated still. So we need to turn off our cabinet. So just like if you're using a software-based amp simulator, if you're using hardware-based, you need to bypass the cabinet. So bypass the cabinet. There we go, cabinet's off. Now also turn off the other effects just so we can hear what Mix IR2 sounds like with just an amp simulator. So now if I were to play, much better. So just remember to bypass your cabinet whether you are using a hardware based sim or a software based sim. If you happen to be using an 11 rack as your hardware, also know even when the cabinet is bypassed, speaker breakup is still active. So if you don't want any speaker breakup, you have to turn that all the way down to zero. I actually like to add a little to the signal because it just sounds really good. So you can see here now if we were to bypass Mix IR2, which is our cabinet sound, and our cabinet's bypassed on the 11 rack, and we played, that's just the sound of the amp simulation, no cabinet, which is what we want. So we'll turn that back on, and now we'll look at Mix IR2 a bit more. So looking over Mix IR2, you see we have six blocks. Each block has five spaces. So six times five, that's 30. So that's 30 spaces for impulse responses, which should be more than enough. So some basics of using Mix IR2 is you have an option on the input. You want your input to be parallel or inline mode. You see if I click one of these buttons, how the signal flow will change. You can see that. Very nice. Next we look here and we have a mix bar. This will mix how much of that block you will be hearing from the output. So you can set up these blocks, say you have something set up in block 2 where you only want a, a little bit of effect from, you could pull that way down so it's just a little bit in the mix, pull block 1 way up, and have that more present in the mix, really shape your tone just how you want. So I'm on Windows here, so I'll hold on Control, click that mix bar, and I'll put it back to the default. Next we'll look over here on how to load the impulses. 
So when I bought MixIR2, I got it as part of the big box bundle. You can buy MixIR2 on its own for, right now it's $49, or you can buy the big box bundle, which right now is $125, and it comes with MixIR2. So you have a couple choices. I would definitely suggest getting the big box bundle. It's more than worth it, 125 bucks. you get a $50 plug-in for free. It's great. Not to mention all the great impulse responses you'll get, and you're going to want a lot of great impulses to use in your new plugin. So we'll load an impulse response. We'll go to the big box here. Now my session now is 96K, 24-bit, so I'll choose that. And you can see here how many different cabinets there are. All kind of cabinets. You click on a cabinet, drops you into the mic selection screen, so then you choose what mic. Choose a mic. Then you have all the different positions that mic is in. Say on the cap, half inch away. On the cap, two inches away. On the cap, edge, one inch away. On the cone, half an inch away. Right up on the grill. Cone edge, room, etc. You also have things like ambient mics, which are nice. No six inches. Room, no zero inches. Back. All this is explained in the PDF that will come with MixIR2 and the Big Box Bundle. So let's we'll grab a 5150 Sheffield here, 1200, and I'll grab a Royer 121. I'll just grab the first one here, which is on a cap half inch away, and you just drop it right on your block. Great. So now you're already ready to go. All right. You could then say, go back, and I'll choose just another random cabinet and another random mic. Just grab another impulse response here and I'll drop it right on this right in that same block and let's hear this okay so one thing you could do is you come in here to where it says mix percent we'll change the mix percent of this impulse response say down to about 33 percent all right we'll say we like that we can go back and then choose another cabinet with another mic just grab one here by random then hear that. Okay, so say we don't like that. We just want to have a touch of that in here. All right, that's nice. So that's one way you could mix your impulse responses together. And then you could say, go back, grab another cabinet, and start filling up block two, block three, block four, etc. You're also, if you have the big box bundle, you're not limited to just cabinet impulse responses. You also have things like EQ, impedance curves, pass through, speaker box. So you get a lot more than just cabinets with the big box. So I could grab an impedance curve here of say a Celeste John V30 at about 50%. I'll just drop this right here and then we'll hear that. Impedance curves are great. They really give that great tube feel to the sound. So then we can mix this in about 40%. Great. Of course, there are multiple possibilities of how you can stack your impulse responses. You're not limited to just going on one block. We can have one impulse response in this block here. All right. We'll go back in here to the big box, and we'll grab, say, an Uber cab with T75s. Uh, we'll go with a PR30, try two inches away, and drop it into block two. All right. Now we can use this mix bar here to mix more or less of that block into the total mix. So we'll drag that down. All right. Pull it up. All right. So you, you get the point of how that works. You can also, of course, turn off blocks. Turn them back on, etc. So I'm going to turn off all the other blocks here. So now we just have block one going. Now let's look down here to these pan knobs because it's very important to understand how these pan knobs work. You'll see down here it says IR pan. So it's impulse response pan. We're not actually panning the signal of the amp. What we're panning is the position of the impulse response. So right now it's in the center. Okay, so if I were to drag the pan knob all the way to the left, now this impulse response, the 5150 uh, Sheffield with the R121 microphone, that impulse response is panned all the way to the left, but the signal on the right will now be completely unaffected by an impulse response. So on the right side, you'll be hearing just the amplifier with no cab. So if I were to bypass the plug-in, okay, that's the sound of just the amplifier. 
I'll turn Mix R2 back on. Now listen to this. Okay, so I think you get the idea. It's just very important to understand how these pan knobs work exactly. It's great that the pan knobs are not actually panning the, the source signal, but, but you're actually panning the impulse responses. Why is this great? Well, let me show you real quick. Oh, I'm on Windows, so again, I'll hold Control, click, and then I'll drop this pan knob back into its default position, which is the center. I'll come down here to block three. We'll go out to, say, an EQ, which is a low shelf, 110 hertz cut. We'll drop that in here on block three. Make sure block three is turned on. Now block three right now is panned right to the center. So let's hear how this sounds. Okay, now turn block three off. Okay, now hear it with that 110 cut in there again. Can you hear that? Okay, let's try it with a 220 hertz here. That'll probably be more audible. So right now we have block one active and block three active, and they're both panned to center. So since these pan knobs are panning the impulse response, I can leave our cabinet impulse response, which is on block one, I'll leave that center, and then I'll pan the impulse response of the EQ, which is a low shelf cut. I'll pan that all the way right. So we'll still have the cabinet sound coming out both channels, but the right channel will have a slightly different EQ shape to it. All right, turn that off. Turn it back on. So hopefully that'll give you some ideas on ways you can route your signal flow with Mix IR2. So I'll turn off block three. You see we also have options here for dry. Uh, how much of the dry sound do we want to dial in into our cabinet sound? So right now it's on zero. So if we were to dial the dry sound way up. Okay, the, the dry sound you're getting is the sound from the input, which in this case is the amp sound from the 11 rack. So if we bypass Mix IR2, that's the dry sound we're dialing in with this dry mix knob here. So down to off. Or dial some of it in. All kind of possibilities. Uh, you also have a wet knob here. If you turn that all the way off. See we're not getting any sound. So if you dial wet all the way off, you'll see the impulse response. It's not making any noise. So you can adjust that here. And then you can add in some dry if you want to. So those options are pretty self-explanatory. So we'll turn on block one and two and hear how this sounds here. All right. So let's say we come back in here to our big box and grab, we'll just grab a random one here. Drop this into block two. All right, and we'll pan the impulse responses on block one left and the impulse responses on block two right. You see now our level left and right is a little bit different. That's where these handy levers will come in. See, our left side is slightly louder than our, than our right side, so we can adjust the volume of our left side by just grabbing this left handle and pulling it down. So you have even further ways to customize the end result. So to recap a little bit, you'll want Mix IR2 to be inserted after the amplifier sound, okay? So whether you're using outboard hardware or you're using a plug-in software or a real amplifier, you'll want Mix IR2 to come after the amplifier sound with the cabinet, of course, bypassed. You can load up impulse responses in up to six blocks. You have five spaces per block. You can then further 
mix and adjust the percentage of each impulse response by clicking in this mix section here, typing in a certain percentage. You can manually adjust the length in milliseconds of each impulse response as well. You also have a knob down here. You can mix in the impulse responses per block by using this mix fader here. All the way off, 100%. Come down to the bottom and pan your impulse responses in varying degrees of left to right, all six blocks. You can click this little button here and turn your path into mono. You can dial in your dry sound, your wet sound. In this area is where you would choose your impulse responses and your microphones and exactly where the microphone is placed on the cabinet. Then to place an impulse response in one of the blocks, all you have to do is drag it in, drag and drop. Get rid of one, just click on it, delete it, click, press the delete key. You can actually change the name of the blocks. If you don't want IR block one, you could completely change the name to, to say cabs, and you can load your cabinets in this one. You could change the block of this to EQ, and have EQs loaded here whatever. You'll come with a preset of a basic mix where you can just drag that in and you can see mic 1, mic 2, room mic, Z curves, EQ, reverb, etc. So I think that pretty much covers the basics of setting up MixIR2 and using it with your chosen hardware, software, or even a real amplifier. So if you've been looking for some great cabinet sounds to really expand your tonal palette, the big box from Redwires is definitely something to look at. And of course you're going to need an impulse response host. And Mix IR2 is absolutely second to none. The amount of options you have to customize your tone are just amazing. There's no doubt in my mind you'll be able to dial in just the exact tone you've always wanted. This plug-in and the big box bundle are a great addition to any doll. really opens up the tonal possibilities that you are capable of producing. And really makes for a better end product. So check out the big box bundle in MixIR2 at redwires.com.